Hi everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're gonna to talk about how you can have objects in C++ share variables. To do this, we're gonna to have to understand the difference between static member variables and instance member variables. So let's get started by creating a class, which I'll call integer, and we'll give it a private field, which we'll just call number. And then we'll have as part of our public interface, we'll have a constructor, which will simply initialize num to zero. And then we'll have an accessor and a mutator that are going to just set and get. And so we'll be able to set the num variable to the argument. And then we'll have our accessor, which is simply going to return the contents of num. So now we're gonna talk about how num here is an instance variable. Okay, so what that means is that if I create two separate integer objects, so let's say we do obj1 and obj2. So if I were to set the num variable in object obj1, right, if I was to set that to say eight, and then if I was to set the num variable in the second object to 12, then those are two different memory locations, two separate objects and two separate num variables, right? Each object has its own num variable. So if I was to display the contents of each of those, you would see that they are separate. Okay, they're not the same variable. They're two separate objects with their own members. And so you can see then that that's the case. And if I was to update the num variable in the obj1 object, you can see that obj2 is unaffected, right? Only obj1's num field or num variable got changed. So this is an example of a class instance variable. Every instance of class integer is gonna have its own instance of the num field. But we don't have to do that. We can create what's known as a static member variable. And when we do that, then all the instances of the class will share the same memory location. So for instance, if I do this, if I use the static keyword and I say, you know, shared, every instance of class integer is now going to share one variable, one memory location, and they're all going to refer to it through their shared static variable. All right. It's almost as if this static member variable was kind of like a pointer pointing to a global variable. You know, shared is becoming kind of like a global variable for all instances of class integer. All right, so we do that, but we also, to make this work, we have to have a definition outside the class. So it's gonna be a definition of the static member variable outside the class. All right, so we have our class declaration here, and we declared this static member variable, but here we're actually gonna define it. And we're gonna define it by specifying the data type. And then we're gonna say what class we're referring to. We use the scope resolution operator, and then we're gonna say shared. And then we'll assign it some value. We'll initialize it with say zero. Okay, so it is this variable that every instance of class integer is going to share. So let's add an accessor for getting that shared variable. This is just going to simply return shared. And we'll add a mutator here called bump. Okay. And so what bump's going to do is it's going to simply increment the shared variable. So now when we come down to our main, what we'll do is we'll instantiate obj1 and obj2. Go ahead and call get shared for each of them. So if I do obj1 dot get shared and then I do obj Two dot get shared and send all of that to C out. Okay, then you're going to see that zero zero, right? Because we initialize this one variable to zero. Now both obj one and obj two are pointing to shared through their static member variable. Now if I was to do this, if I was to say obj one dot bump, what that's going to do is it's going to increment shared by one. But since both obj one and obj two share this same variable. When I call get shared for both of them, you're going to see that they both reflect that change, right? So let's do this again. Okay. See how they both went to one? That's because they're both sharing the shared variable. Now, if I was to call the bump function for obj2, then you're going to see that shared gets 
bumped yet again, right? Gets increased yet again. So both instances of obj1 and obj2 are sharing this same shared variable. Now, if I was to come along and instantiate yet another instance of integer, and then I was to see out obj3.get shared, you'd see that it has access to that shared variable again. So every instance of class integer has access to this variable right here. Now, in addition to this, creating a static member variable, we can have static member functions. So we can do this. We can say static void update shared, and then we'll pass an argument. And then we will update shared to the argument. And then we'll have a static member named retrieve shared. And then it's simply going to return the uh, shared variable. Okay. Now you might be looking at this and saying, well, what's the, what's the point, right? I mean, you have this uh, function here, retrieve shared, that's simply going to retrieve the contents of shared here, but you're looking at it and going, well, you already have a get shared. Well, why would you do that? Well, these functions here can be executed without an instance of class integer being instantiated. I can do C out integer scope resolution operator, retrieve shared. So I'm accessing this value and executing this method without any instance, no instance of integer defined yet. So you're going to see that we're going to see that zero first. And then I can also change it. So I could do something like this. I could say integer update shared 99. So when I do that, that's going to update that shared static variable. So now you can see, you know, there's the 99, there's the 99. We updated it. We changed that value in that location before ever instantiating any instance of class integer. Another thing that you could do with static member functions is you could create a class and let's call it foo. And what you can do is you can just define a bunch of static functions. Right, so you could do static int add, say int a int b, and then you know return a plus b. You could do static int sub, right, int a int b, and then just do something like return a minus b. All right, so now you've got these functions that are defined as part of class foo here, and you can just execute them. You don't have to instantiate class foo. So we can do something like this. We can say foo add eight, three, right? And then we could do foo sub three, five, for example. Right? So you can make a class full of static variables or static member functions that kind of just you know, group a bunch of related functions together. Now, what you can't do is you can't add a static function that is going to try to return an instance variable. So something like static int uh, get, and then try to return num. Okay, this isn't, this is not gonna be allowed because num is an instance variable, right? Every single instance of class integer has got its own copy of num. But remember what static functions are doing, they exist outside of individual instances of a class. Um, and likewise, you can't have a set function, right? So static member functions cannot access instance variables. And finally, you'll notice that when I did my static int retrieve shared, I didn't put a const here, right? So no const. Why not? Well, take a look. There's a red squiggle that appears. Why? Because of what we just described, right? Um, remember what const does on accessors. They prevent the function from being able to update variables of the class. And since static member variables can't access instance variables anyway, it makes no sense. So static member functions are for use with static member variables, which don't belong to any individual class. So it makes no sense to make these const. Okay, so now you know how to share variables amongst all the instances of your classes in C++.